Hello guys, it's Sneaky Turtle back with another Kerbal Space Program video. In this video I'll be building the X-15 uh, space plane. Uh, I have not uploaded in a while, so finally I'm uploading again. Um, going to use the silver fairings and uh, I also use a nose cone on the back. But what's really weird about the nose cone is when I tried to change the color of it, for some reason it says orange, but when you click on orange, it becomes black. Which I wanted it to be black, but the one that said black only put a black stripe on it. Which is kind of confusing, but... I made the fairing silver, because if you turn, um... Reflections off, it makes the silver like a dark silver, so that it kind of matches the black color of the X-15. So it was just kind of weird, but... I'm using the uh, smaller fuel tanks and glitching them inside of each other, because... If I were to use the FLTO, uh, it would like glitch out of the fairing, um, because in KSP there's no way to fill fairings with fuel, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. Uh, it has Its engine was placed like almost inside of the rocket. Uh, this was a hypersonic airplane. It reached speeds of 4,520 miles per hour at its top speed flown by the pilot William J. Knight. And 4,520 miles per hour is ridiculously fast. He did it at an altitude of 102,000 feet, I believe. I'd actually have to check that. Alright, I just checked that it, w it was indeed 100,000 feet. It was 13 miles above the surface. And this thing was insanely powerful. Um, just, just, just stupidly powerful airplane flown on the uh, bottom of a B-52 bomber aircraft that would fly to a high altitude, drop it, and then it would go to the edge of space. Except it's Kerbal Space Program, so we'll be sending this one to orbit. Now, um, it this one did not uh, it did not fly the greatest. Um, I ended up putting an ore tank in the front, but didn't really help its uh, flight stability. Um, if you if any of you guys decide to build this and follow along with this kind of time lapse, then I would recommend moving the wings up a little further, um, but I didn't, which probably wasn't good. But now as the build of the X-15 comes to an end, we can start work here on the B-52 carrier aircraft. Now, I suck at building planes, so I actually had a friend build the build this plane for me. Like, I'm horrible at building planes. Um, and this is sort of a B-52 uh, bomber plane. The B-52 bomber plane had eight jet engines in total. It was, like, really, really powerful. Um, and basically, that would allow this to carry the X-15 to an extremely high altitude uh, and then launch it so that it could go to space. And something interesting to note is that Neil Armstrong actually flew on the X-15 as part of training for going to space in an actual rocket. The X-15 most of the time did not really reach space, just went to the edge of space. But still, major accomplishments for NASA, kind of showing them how to get to space, and they solved a lot of problems on the way. So overall, a really cool aircraft, but funding was cut for it after only about 15 launches. And now we're finishing up the main wing piece. So we're going to start work on the back of the aircraft.
but this did take a little bit of fine tuning to get the wings all correct. And the B-52 had little uh, like wing streaks that came down with jet engines on them. And the B-52 had a total of uh, six landing gear. It had two on the very tips of the wings and then uh, two in the front and two in the back of the aircraft. Very, very, very large plane. I ended up going for the whiplash engines just because they're very, very, very efficient and they uh, they can produce a high amount of thrust at high altitudes, unlike the Goliath engine. So that's why I went with that because our target altitude would be 20 kilometers, which is fairly high up. And now finishing up the back section and making the tail fin now. Uh, finishing up the, the tail fin. The tail fin did take a while, but it's sped up. So the first few launches of the X-15, at least the first one, um, was kind of a failure. Uh, the pilot did survive, but the first launch, uh, the plane was pretty much completely destroyed and would not be reused because they had problems with heating, so the whole aircraft would heat up so much that it would start to rip holes through the entire aircraft. They ended up fixing that with an ablative heat shield. And even back then they had problems with the heat shield and with the space shuttle they did too, and that, that caused that killed everyone on Columbia, so that's... I don't know, I guess they should have learned their lesson from the X, X-15, but they didn't. Putting in some more fuel tanks in the B-52 now, so that we're getting ready for its launch. And now the B-52 carrier aircraft is basically complete. Moving the wings a little bit further back, but getting ready for launch. Now it is basically 100% complete. We're going to roll out to the runway. The X-15 is mounted under the left wing, which makes the aircraft very unstable on the runway, but once it's in flight, it's very, very stable. This B-52 is like The only way I can turn it properly is by holding Q or E so that the airplane will tilt and the landing gear on the side would touch the ground and create extra drag. Which is the ground. And now we are going back up to three times speed so that we can come up on the launch altitude of 20 kilometers. And this thing is so powerful it can do a very, very steep climb of almost 90 degrees. So we're heading up to 20 kilometers now. Doing the United Spaces. Heading up to 20 kilometers, nominal ascent. Getting ready to fire up Starship's engines. That didn't make any sense about that. Because it's pretty close. Because we're in space. But we are coming up on the drop. And release. And there goes the engine and the X-16 fires up, passing the B-52. Increasing throttle of the X-15. The B-52 is appearing on the top left of your screen, heading back to the runway pretty soon, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Getting a little worried there, but... Good. Okay, the B-52 is on the top left, heading back to the runway. And we're gliding up to Apogee, firing up the engine and pushing the X-15 into a low curve in orbit. Nothing else we can really do with this mission, so 
we're going to come back in for our landing. And the B-52 is coming in for our landing. We will be sure to go full screen for the landing. And the X-15 just did its deorbit burn, coming in for a landing. And now the B-52 is full screened. What do you rate this landing, guys? Is it amazing? I think it was okay. The X-15 is coming in for a landing next to the KSC. Uh, the landing gear wouldn't deploy, so if you do build this, make sure you glitch the landing gear further out of the fairing so that they don't do this. Uh, and then, for some reason, it was doing this. But luckily, the pilot survived. What would you rate that landing? Uh, I'd rate that a 1 out of 10. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Bye!